we've got some breaking news right now. The Colorado Supreme Court, get this, has just ruled on a challenge to Donald Trump's appearance on the state's 2024 ballot. I want to go straight to CNN's Paula Reed. Paula, what does this ruling say? Well, if this is a stunning ruling from the Colorado Supreme Court saying that Trump should not appear on the ballot in 2024. Now, this is surprising in part because they are reversing a lower court that found while Trump did engage in an insurrection on January 6, that Section 3 of the 14th Amendment did not apply to presidents and therefore he should not be kept off the ballot. Now, when we're talking about this particular section, this is a Civil War era clause of the Constitution. And in here, the courts are, are trying to assess exactly what that means. Well, it does specifically mention uh, House representatives, the Senate, even electors. It doesn't say anything uh, about president. So here the court was weighing whether they could keep former President Trump off the ballot. Uh, because of what happened on January 6th. And here the Supreme Court, the highest court in the state of Colorado, ruling that he should be disqualified, he should be kept off the ballot. But, Wolf, they're going to stay or pause this decision until January 4th to allow the former president or anyone else to appeal to the Supreme Court on this question. Very significant indeed. I want to bring in the rest of our team right now. Ellie Honig, how stunning is this decision? Well, Wolf, this is a historic decision. It's a momentous decision. As the Supreme Court itself says, they are in uncharted territory here, but it's really important to keep in mind, this is not the last word here. This is almost certainly going up to the U.S. Supreme Court, which can review the decisions of a state Supreme Court. In fact, the Colorado Supreme Court anticipates that possibility. And for that reason, they put their own ruling on hold until January 4th, anticipating that it will go up to the Supreme Court. The practical consequence as it stands at this moment, though, is that Donald Trump will not be on the Colorado ballot in the race for president in 2024. The Supreme Court almost certainly will take this up. It's also important to keep in mind for the broader context. There have been dozens of these challenges filed across the country and 18 or so of them have either failed, been rejected, or been withdrawn by the plaintiff. So this is really an outlier. The Supreme Court is going to have the final say. The consequences here are, of course, enormous. Norm Eisen, are you surprised by this decision? Um, well, Wolf, the law and the um, politics have collided. And in this instance, law has won. There's a logic to the decision. The 14th Amendment provides that insurrectionists may not hold office. The lower court found that Donald Trump had engaged in insurrectionist activity. That's consonant with what the January 6th committee found. Uh, and so the only question was, legally, did this apply to a president? The Supreme Court said it did. I think because of the earth-shaking nature of the holding. We thought that uh, politics might militate against it, but uh, the courts, as they should do, have put on blinkers and applied the Constitution. Now it'll be up to the Supreme Court to have the final word. Yeah, the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution says, and I'm quoting now, no person shall hold any office who, having previously taken an oath to support the Constitution of the United States shall have engaged shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same, or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. Uh, pretty significant uh, 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. David, uh, this has never happened before. Earlier challenges to get Trump removed from state ballots for the presidency for the presidency have failed. What does it mean politically for Trump to be removed potentially from the Republican primary ballot? in Colorado. Yeah, well, if I think we're going to go through a year of this has never happened before in this presidential election. So be prepared to uh, keep stating that, um, you know, as Ellie was noting, and I, I do think it is important context you're bringing up here, uh, the vast majority of these cases to date have actually gone the other way. And uh, I would imagine that that is not going to be lost on the Supreme Court when it looks at the specifics of this case, but uh, looks at this issue broadly. Uh, politically, of course, Colorado has 10 electoral votes. They were in Joe Biden's column, not Donald Trump's column uh, back in 2020. Uh, but if you start taking 
uh, potentially available electoral votes off the board. Uh, the the map to 270, even though this was not part of his 2020 path, uh, becomes more uh, complicated in that way. We have no indication yet that the Trump team was planning to engage fully in Colorado and 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 run a concerted effort uh, in that state to play for those electoral votes. But again, it's the broader concept here that would be earth shaking to the uh, election itself. And uh, as we learned back in 2000 in Bush v. Gore, you know, when the Supreme Court gets involved looking at a state Supreme Court, uh, things unexpected could ca- could potentially happen. Uh, and we'll see what the Supreme Court does here. This has always been an issue that's going to be headed for the highest court. Because in the earlier efforts to get Trump removed from the state presidential ballot failed in Minnesota, uh, in New Hampshire, in Michigan, and right now in Colorado, it's going forward to remove him. Alyssa, how do you expect Trump and his team to react to this stunning news. It, it truly is stunning news. And I expect this is a five alarm fire, even to the fact of Dave Chalian's point that this doesn't actually really change the map for Donald Trump. He's not necessarily playing for the 10 electoral votes in Colorado, but it's the precedent it sets. And it's also just the mindset that it signals to voters, which is for the first time in history, he is unfit to appear on a ballot for the presidency. Um, and of course, there would be implications if the Supreme Court upheld this. Um, I think that you're going to hear a massive outcry from him and his team. They're needlessly to say, needless to say, are going to be challenging this. And I do offer a word of caution because these these have obviously appeared in other states and mostly been struck down. Um, There is an argument to be made for the fact that this should ultimately ultimately be left up to the voters. I've heard this from quite a few Republicans who want to see us move on from Donald Trump, but they worry about playing into the hands of him being able to say the system is rigged. Now, it's not. This is the courts working the way they're supposed to. But he will quickly frame this as they're rigging the system against me in favor of Joe Biden. Watch for him to say that. Let's get back to Paula. So what comes next? Walk us through the process. I assume Trump and his lawyers will start to appeal this, right? Yeah, unfortunately for Trump's legal team, uh, they are likely going to have to work through the holiday, something that they had complained about uh, related to the special counsel investigation and some filing deadlines there and some of the work that the special counsel, they said, was making them do through the holiday. But here, this is going to this is going to be something that they're going to have to pay attention to. They're literally being given a window in which to appeal this to the Supreme Court. We would fully expect that they will avail themselves of that. And then this case, it is likely that the Supreme Court would want to take up this question uh, of exactly who the 14th Amendment applies to. And if Trump or any other current or former president can be removed from the ballot here. And while this only applies to Colorado, this is something that will likely have reverberations in other states that are considering the same issue. I also want to note that some people may wonder, well, if he's not on the ballot, can people just write him in? Well, in this opinion, they specifically say that the Secretary of State is also barred from counting any write-in votes cast for Trump. Interesting. Ellie, uh, why is the Colorado Supreme Court right now an outlier here? Minnesota, as I pointed out, dismissed a similar lawsuit to this one back in November. Well, well, this is precisely why we have such dissonance in the various decisions that we're getting from different states, because nobody quite knows exactly how the 14th Amendment works. Yes, we have this amendment. It's very important. It says that anyone who gave aid to insurrection or rebellion is ineligible. But the problem is neither the Constitution nor Congress have given us any further guidance as to how it works. And so the theories that have been advanced by 14th Amendment proponents have been all over the map, literally. They argued at one point that, well, it's up to individual secretaries of state. They can decide on their own. Well, every secretary of state, Democrat and Republican, to consider that, rejected it. Then they went into various courts, sometimes state level, sometimes federal level. And the failures have across the board been not so much failures of proving that Donald Trump was in fact aiding or engaging in insurrection, but procedural questions of how do we make this decision? Who decides? Is it a judge? Is it a jury? What burden of proof? And the Colorado Supreme Court satisfies itself that what was done here in the trial court, the trial court judge held a several week long hearing, was enough and that the law is clear enough that they made this decision. But that's going to be the question for the Supreme Court. I don't think it will so much be, did Donald Trump engage in insurrection? I think it will be, is there an established procedure? And does it violate Donald Trump's due process rights to essentially make one up on the fly and then apply it backwards in time? Norm, do you think this ruling by the Colorado Supreme Court will ultimately stand? Uh, Well, Wolf, that'll be up to the United States Supreme Court, of course. 
But I, I think that this is one of the more substantial of the cases. Ellie is talking about a very broad pool, but there's a small number that have been queued up at trial, gone up on appeal, been fully briefed with an evidentiary basis. And when you just look at the plain language of the 14th Amendment, you Put that together with what the January 6th committee found, the testimony and the evidence that were taken by the trial court here. The trial court found with merit that Donald Trump uh, was in insurrection. And um, the Fourth Amendment is not going to be so easily dismissed. So I think the Supreme Court will wrestle with it. They'll take it seriously. And it's very tough to predict what they'll do. But it is a serious case and a well-founded legal and evidentiary decision.